Hi guys, welcome back to Beauty for Ashes. Welcome back to the channel. Um, we're so happy to be back on YouTube. If you've been following our channel, you know that we've been MIA for a few months, um, but that was because of the leading of the Holy Spirit. God had brought us through this insane and crazy process of selling our house and going to a place that he will show us. So that was not the easiest process. I can't, I thought that process would have taken me out flat and cold. Like I thought that process would have been the end of me because not only are we still pregnant, right? God had us transition in mid pregnancy with very little direction, but all he kept saying was, trust me, trust me. But we're here. We made it. We are alive and well. Glory be to God. And we are finally in the place where we can come back on YouTube and really spend some time with our YouTube family. How do you feel, babe, to be back on YouTube? I'm so excited. How do you feel? Uh, it's a uh, lot of mixed feelings. Uh, it has been a while. And as my wife said, it was a make or break season. And yeah. I have to tell you that if it wasn't for the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. uh, we wouldn't have made it. It's, had, it, it. it's as the scripture states, his strength is made perfect in all weaknesses. Because there were many weak, weak moments. Weak, there were many weak moments. There were many moments when I was weak and she had to reassure me with the word of God. Mm -hmm. There was moments when she was weak and I had to reassure yes. her with the word of God. Right. So I'm telling you, if it wasn't for him and his word, which is the truth, we wouldn't have been here. Absolutely. So it's, it's, it's good to be back and I am looking forward. Before I said that we were here and we were going to be more consistent. Mm -hmm. However, we were planning that, but we did not know the plan that God had for us, which right. indeed is the better plan. Right. So we had to subdue and obey what he said. And that's why we withdrew and did what he uh, let he was us asking to do. us to do. Yeah, God was like, listen, shut down all operations. Shut it down. <laughs> and, you know, he really wanted us to be focused um, during that time of transition because it was tough. It was mm. really tough. It was a mm. tough time. But we're here. We're finally in our we land it. of promise. <laughs> and we really can't wait to share that story with you um, over time as we're sharing our journey and our experiences. We'll tell you guys what the Lord did to us right before the cusp of the new year when he basically said, listen, it's going to be it's going to be a year of some changes and transitions. But we'll keep you guys up to date. But in today's video, excitedly, we're going to be talking about what does it take to constantly walk in the supernatural realm? What does it take mm. to live a supernatural life? And we, I, I think our lives are a reflection of living in the supernatural constantly, right? So we want to share with you our thoughts and ideas of those prerequisites, like what does it really take to constantly walk in the favor of God, constantly walk in the realm of the supernatural, constantly walk in the spirit. And in return, you can see the blessings and you can see the hand of God so evident in your life. So babe, I'm gonna start this off. I'm gonna kick this question to you. What does it take to walk in the supernatural with very little to no faith? How does that work? Okay, babe, so that's a really good question, and I'm going to add to that question. Um, I'm going to add to the question. Also, little, limited understanding, because I'm going to talk from my experience, and I had limited understanding also. So you're saying with, how do you walk in the supernatural with limited faith, right? Because, you know, we all go through times of testing mm -hmm. and trial, and our faith really takes a hit. Sometimes my faith reminds me of, um, I think Paul mentioned it clearly, um, where it's like you're in a boxing ring and sometimes your faith is going to take some hits. Yeah, that's right? it. So how do you maintain, how do you walk in the supernatural realm with very little faith? And what did you add on, babe? And the limited understanding. And limited understanding. I would say uh, a surrendered heart. And I'm talking from my experience. My experiences. And Wait, babe, let me ask you a question. When did you start walking in the supernatural? Like, even before, because it doesn't take you to be saved to walk in the supernatural. Like, God is such a good and gracious God. 
he can have you go through supernatural experiences that you will only see in hindsight, right? Looking back. So when did you officially, when do you think you started walking in the supernatural realm? For me, I had no idea that I was walking in the supernatural. I had no idea the favor or the grace that was on my life. Mm -hmm. I had no idea my broken thoughts are nothing compared to the thoughts that God had for me. And I did not know this up until a particular time. So I'm going to take you back a bit mm -hmm. and show you how strategic our God is. Mm -hmm. How he puts things in place even when you don't know he is doing it. Right. How, he, how he is working. As Jesus Christ said, my father is always working. Mm -hmm. How he uh, is always working when you don't know that he is working. Right. I'm going to take you back on a journey with me to my, to my high school days. Mm -hmm. And my high school days, I was still an immature little boy who knew nothing. I mean nothing about the relationship that we should have with our God. Mm -hmm. It has always been a religious thing. That's what was taught to my parents and that what, that's what they taught us. What do you mean? Can you elaborate when you say religion? What does that look like in your upbringing? Okay, in my upbringing, you go to church up until a particular age and if you want to go, then you go. If you don't want to go, then you don't go. But that's just how it was. My mother did not attend church. My father did not attend church. They just take you to the church. You go to Sunday school. When, when Sunday school is over, you go back home. So for us, it was just going to Sunday school, playing the games, getting mm -hmm. some treat, and then go back home. Hearing a few Bible stories. Some of what had an impression on our, on our heart. So my high school days, I've, I've always wanted to become a firefighter. That has always been my career choice. So in the latter part of my high school days, I was a victim of an armed robbery. Little did I know that this was divinely done to give me a career redirection. Mm -hmm. Where I was held up at knife point and immediately after the robbers were fleeing the scene, a detective car drove up and the officer asked me what was wrong. Because of that encounter with the officer, I immediately had an impression in my heart that this is something that I want to do. This is something that my character fits and this is something that, this is an era that I should be serving in. Mm -hmm. So I love the fact that you're saying that God planted a seed in your heart for direction, right? Because if he wasn't a police officer, then we wouldn't have met. So all along going through primary school, going through um, elementary school, he wanted to be a firefighter, that was his desire. But through this divine moment, this divine incident that many will look at as this is the worst thing that could possibly happen, right? God birthed a seed, a desire in his heart to become a police officer. Isn't that amazing, right? Isn't that a supernatural divine encounter that will steer us? right and put us on that supernatural path that God has set out for us continue babe okay and gets even deeper I can explain how divine that incident was mm -hmm. normally how we know it armed robbers come and rob you they'll take everything you have the guys walk up with their knife told me that they wanted my phone and I was like no I'm not giving you my phone and I took out a $500 bill from my pocket and gave it to them how Ironic it is that someone is robbing you and you're there telling them what you're going to give them. Mm -hmm. What a coincidence. And immediately after they're walking from where I was standing, mm -hmm. the police car drove up. Right, right. It can't be that I was that lucky. Because right. that's how most times we look at it, we call it luck. Mm -hmm. But it was exactly a divine intervention. It was a divine incident. The officers took me to the station and called my parents because I was still a minor and you had to have parent, parents' consent to go further with the matter. So the officer took the thieves and I to the station and got in contact with my mother and she came to the station. However, my mother is not, she, she, she does not have any faith in the judicial system in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. She always tries to stay far from anything has to do with police or the courthouse. Mm -hmm. So immediately as she came there and she saw that I was okay, she was like, okay, obviously I don't want to go any further, further with this. Mm -hmm. And as I said, my mother shut that door so quick. I had 
no tries in the matter and what the officer had explained to me ignited a fire in my heart and I started thinking about the numerous persons who have been wronged, who are, who are victim of any kind of theft or injustice any or kind of injustice and justice wasn't served and they did not get any justice and that's where the Lord started fueling that desire to want to do something for victims of crime that didn't get any justice mm -hmm. and that's where my career change came in immediately after that an incident and the desire that was in my heart I started researching how to become an officer I started looking at the requirements where can I go to do it what would I need and immediately after leaving high school I started pursuing that career and guys I must tell you before I had already signed up for the firefighting recruitment exam because that has always been my dream so I totally put that on the back burner and started pursuing what was now on my heart not knowing that the Lord really wanted me to go that route in order to lead us to where we are now mm -hmm. so I started pursuing it but little did I know that God timing is so far and different from our timing because I went so confident because I'm like I, I have all the requirements. requirements but one because they were saying something about some weight and I've always been slim and sexy so I know that would have been a problem but I'm like they'll overlook it so I went to the recruitment center and little did I know that if you don't have the weight you don't cut it so they shot my papers and then they started to do the, the, the weight and the measuring and the lady was like no you don't you don't reach our weight requirement and also you're about two inches short I'm like what <laughs> what and I'm like but I have to do this this is something that I have to do not knowing that this was the Holy Spirit telling me that yes it is something you have to do but no it's not the time I'm like I have to this is this is my dream I started explaining to the lady that this is my dream remember this is something that just came to me a, a, a month or two ago <laughs> this is not something that I had in my mind from before. Year before years before it has just came to me and I'm like this is my dream this is my dream job I have to and she was like no I can't let it you I can't let you take the exam and I went home feeling disappointed I I remember crying that night and I prayed about it again and I left it because that's how my prayer life was I'm going to do something I pray one time and that's it I don't wait on anything I did not know about the relationship that you should have with your God so right after that disappointment guys I got exposed to the world mm -hmm. I am no out of high school and I just decided that I'm going to start living mm -hmm. to cut a long short story short I got to the point where I, I still felt that desire to do it and I said okay I've been eating a lot more, I've been stretching because I started doing it in the world as we know. I'm saying I can do the things to get me where I need to go. I'm not thinking about God now. I'm saying that I can do it. So I started exercising more because they're saying that the more you exercise, you can grow. If you stretch, you can grow. Mm -hmm. I started eating way more food, but little did I know that that's not helping either. So I went a second time and the lady was still saying, it's the same lady, guys. She was saying, listen. <laughs> Yes. What did you do? I told her to eat some cornmeal porridge and I'm like, I don't like cornmeal <laughs> porridge. I ate everything else but that. And she's like, no, that's what you have to eat and you have to stretch more. Because she was still saying that I'm still underweight and I'm still short. Let me, can I interrupt you, babe? So this is now his second time. Yes, it is. Going for the police academy, right? First time, again, the, 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 the seed has been planted. This is what you should be doing. He went the first time, got turned down. He went the second time, got turned down. But I'm gonna kick it to you guys. How many times, you know, you know this is what God is saying you should be doing. You know yep. the direction that God has been giving you, right? But then you take a step, you take a leap of faith and you, you pursue that thing, but it's just closed doors. What do we do then? A lot of times we retreat and we say, listen, mm -hmm. it wasn't God, because I tried it and it didn't work, right? But well, what I want to encourage you is in order to live in the supernatural, one thing that is very crucial and important is to understand the timing of God, right? Because remember the Bible says that she have placed an open door before you that no man can shut. But with that open door comes perfect timing because yeah. that door will not open 
unless God has ordained for it to be open in his perfect time, right? So if you feel like God has put a desire on your heart and you've been running full throttle for that thing and nothing is working out, do not be discouraged, right? Because always remember that to constantly walk in the supernatural, it goes with timing, right? Timing equals divine alignment. So we have to make sure that we're being considerate of the timing of God. All right, babe. So second time turned down and why is a whole, cause the thing is when he's going through his supernatural journey, the Lord is working on my heart, bringing me through my process as well. <laughs> so there was no way God could have allowed him to pursue being a police officer at the time when he went right because remember our journeys are, are supernatural we had a supernatural meeting and a supernatural encounter so again god had to make sure that our timing um to meet was so divine yeah they were lining up right perfectly. they were like they it, were in sync he couldn't have gone before me right so go ahead so you went second time turned down what did you do afterwards and as you're uh, as you were speaking about the timing i something came to my mind uh, guys this has to be the holy spirit and i also would like to add perseverance mm -hmm. and it, it it took me back to the persistent widow so i went one time yes there's disappointment yes it didn't happen but god is still telling you that this is what you should do this is what i have for you this 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 is the plans that i have for you mm -hmm. these are the promises yes you tried one time and it did not come true but that's not saying that it won't happen right. it's just a timing as my wife said but in order to reach god's timing you have to persevere yeah. you have to be persistent mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. and so second time second disappointment after the second turn down i remember saying okay i like cooking i started a culinary training at a hotel and I remember doing it and I enjoy, I enjoyed doing it because as I said before I love cooking and I was learning a lot and I I just at, at one point it just got so overwhelming to me it's like on one side there's enjoyment and then on the other side it's like this is not what you should be doing mm -hmm. little did I know that that was the Holy Spirit convicted me he was saying that he, he didn't want me to get too comfortable in what I'm doing mm -hmm. He wanted me to feel a little discomfort so when it's time to leave it won't be easy to leave mm -hmm. because you know how it is when we're comfortable with something when we're in our zone nobody's going to take us from that so easily mm -hmm. so i remember i'm going to stop you there babe you know again many of us right we pursue something that god has for us it doesn't work out we fill that 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 void of rejection with pursuing something else Right, because we're like, you know what? I thought God wanted me to do this. I thought the Lord wanted me to do that. You, you go, at, you go for it. It doesn't work out, and then we find something else to fill that void, right? And then even when we do that, we still find out that that is not cutting it. It's not hitting the sweet spot, right? Because the Lord still wants you to be persistent in pursuing that thing that he's placed on your heart, yeah. right? So we have to make sure that we're at the place where we're not filling our hearts with different things, different ventures, because we've taken a leap of faith as to what God is putting before us and it didn't work. So now it gotta be something else. Remember the story with a persistent widow, sometimes to constantly walk in the supernatural, it will require some level of persistency. And the guys, I opted out of the course without completing. And while at home, I remember the desire began to get so heavy on my heart that so I remember one day guy I was guys I was outside and I was just looking looking into nowhere and I heard it now is the time I'm telling you I heard it I did not know who said it or where it was coming from but I know that's what I heard and I remember I calling my mom and saying listen I need some cash because I'm going to the recruitment center tomorrow mm -hmm. and my sister on the, the line started saying again and I'm like <laughs> yes no I this this is it this is it and I remember going getting the cash and I went the next day guys and when I went literally I know that it would be the same lady again and she was like you again 
You know what? Come on. She didn't even weigh or measure me, guys. And she didn't even check my documents because she knew from the first time that I indeed had everything. And guys, I have to tell you that it was the same little envelope that I took the first time I had with me. So she knew that I had the, the, the right documents. So she immediately took me to the exam room and gave me the doc some papers to start filling out. And I remember sitting there and just smiling to myself because I'm like, oh, how is this even happening? Mm -hmm. While she's up there measuring the other candidates and I'm there filling out papers. And I did my exam and you got the score back the same day. So I did the exam and she came back and she was like, and I, I started becoming anxious now because I'm saying, why is she just looking at me like that? And then she said, hey, you passed, you did well. And guys, that was my entry into the police academy. So guys, third time, third time. And while he got in the academy, that was 2017, right? Mm -hmm. That was when the Lord began to really fuel my heart. Um, I have somebody for you. Um, you know, this is the person that I have. You're going to get married quickly. This was when the Lord began to impress it on my heart that he wanted me to have an accelerated marriage. He wanted me to have an arranged marriage. And he had all these amazing plans for me, right? So while he got in the police academy and God is taking steps so we can have that divine encounter, I was here in the United States going through my process, going through my healing, going through deliverance and really learning to hear the voice of God because of what God had in store for us with that divine with that divine and supernatural occurrence so guys when he got in the academy my cousin who was a police officer got a promotion to becoming an instructor because i remember back in 2016 i think 15 no 2015 we went to his graduation when he was graduating from the police academy right and he was promoted to an instructor why God had to promote him to that instructor position so he could train my husband because that is how God had to work for my cousin to um, suggest this new place, this apartment that my husband could rent, right? Which belonged to my aunt. So God had to wait. And this is so important. When you're walking in the supernatural, it's not really about you and the husband that you will meet or the wife that you will meet. Other people will be commissioned yes, there's a lot to of the journey, right? So God has to commission and summon people from all over the earth mm -hmm. so your supernatural process could take place. So it's not re So you see, God had to promote. Yeah, Someone had to be promoted into a position so my husband could be trained under him, right? So you see how other people are experiencing favor, the favor of God without even knowing for or supernatural process to come to fruition right so he graduated the academy and my cousin this is his first year as an instructor as his instructor right he did not like tell me if i'm, I'm stating the story correctly he did not like where he was placed so he wanted a new home he wanted an apartment and my cousin said hey what did he say how did he introduce you to this new place where we would have divinely meet Okay guys, so as my wife has been explaining, her cousin who became an instructor at the academy, we met, we developed a, a good relationship based on my characters and the character that he had. He saw similar characters in me, so we, we, got, we got close and after graduation, I, I've always been someone who likes my own space. I, I love cleaning, I can't stand anywhere that's messy. So where they normally house us, it wasn't conducive to me. So I started explaining to him and saying to him that I don't like the place. I, I need somewhere to rent. But guys, I was placed in a city that I did not know, in a part of the country that I did not know. I have no knowledge of it. So I started reaching out to him and saying, hey, do you know anywhere that I can um, rent any good place? Because I didn't want to just go anywhere. As I said, so, and that's when he came and said, oh, but my aunt has a house where I had a room, but however, I, I, however, I'm not living there anymore. I can recommend you to her for her to rent it to you. Mm -hmm. And I'm only going to do this because, of, I, because of the person that I know, I know you to be. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to recommend you to her and then I'll get back to you. And guys, 
he did what he had to do and he called me and said she was saying okay because if he said I'm a good person then she'll take his word and I remember him saying that he's going to come and take me to the place so I can look at it and we went and I saw the place and I fell in love with it and I said okay I'm willing to work with it and then he said okay he's going to put me onto her and immediately as I went on the phone guys I got the apartment and that was it you got the apartment and guys what is so amazing as soon as that connection was established as soon as he got the yes that that would have been his next place to live, right? The Holy Spirit began saying to me, your husband is here, your husband is here. Down to the month, when he moved in, it was May 2019, and that was the exact month. And I'll see if I can find it in my journal, and I'll post a little clip, because you guys, I'm all about receipts, right? And down to the month, that was when the Lord said to me, your husband is here. That was when he began to stir my spirit. Your husband is here. While me, I'm like, where he at? <laughs> Literally, I know, yeah, we know that God was doing a supernatural work. And you know, while my husband was speaking, the Holy Spirit said something, and it's so pivotal, that you should expect the supernatural in the mundane, right? Yep, you that's should it. expect that's it. the supernatural that's it. in the regular day-to-day -day life, you just living. Sometimes we hear the word supernatural and we're thinking this grand thing. No, this just means that, listen, we're operating in the realm of the Holy Spirit, right? We're operating in the spiritual realm where God could move and he can, you know, flex with ease so we can really see the plan that he has for us. Because God, all throughout this time, was operating in our lives in a supernatural way, right? So down to the month, of my husband getting that apartment in May 2019, the Holy Spirit began to impress it on my heart. Your husband is here. The Holy Spirit is preparing my heart for that divine encounter, right? But guys, we're gonna stop this video right here because it's a little bit longer than we had anticipated. But in our next video, we're gonna talk about that supernatural experience of us meeting and of us getting married and we're going to really break it down um, deeper for you to understand what it really takes for you to walk in the realm of the supernatural especially when it comes to finding your husband finding your wife um, connecting with your kingdom partner so we're going to go through that moment when i saw him and when he saw me so if you're watching mm. this video please make sure you follow the other video that is coming after this because then we're going to break it down even further so you, my friends, can be prepared for your supernatural experiences and your supernatural encounter. All right, guys, so thank you so much for watching Beauty for Ashes. I know many of you have been reaching out to me like, girl, where are you at? <laughs> So many of you have been sending me message on Instagram saying, where are you? I hope all is well. We've been well, we've been doing good. But again, you know, God was really taking us through this horrific process. Mm. <laughs> but it's only horrific when you're going through it. Once you get out of it, you're like, glory be to the Lord Jesus Christ. Cause you can see that his hands were at work all the time guys we went through a supernatural process so um again we'll keep you updated on that and for those of you who, who are still asking yes i am still pregnant okay i hope you can see it in my face <laughs> <laughs> but the baby is coming in three weeks all right hopefully, hopefully. All right, at this point, I'm 37 plus weeks pregnant. So we're looking at about two and a half weeks. Um, we're waiting for him and we're so excited. Um, we had to put a pause on our registry because we were in transition. But again, that information will be in the description box if you, in fact, want to bless our family with a gift. So guys, thank you so much for watching Beauty for Ashes. And we will see you guys in our next Supernatural video.